My story focuses on the relationship between two brothers living in 1950s Trinidad. Electricity is now coming to their village of Chagonos and it promises to pull them out of the darkness of the night but also the darkness of superstition. My characters were inspired by the stories my father told me about growing up in colonial Trinidad. His stories about Chagonos are so different from the Chagonos I know today. My story is written entirely in Trinidadian dialect. Growing up, writing and speaking in dialect was greatly discouraged in the classroom, but I think the unique flavor, that distinct flavor of our stories and old talk is found in our Trinidadian language and our unique words. So I wanted to create a narrative that embodied this oral tradition that we have. Our stories connect us. This story is a clear example of what I write and what I hope to write. And so for it to be chosen is uh, a great excitement. Um, I believe that I am kin to many uh, queer writers in this region. And I draw inspiration from the work of like Trinidadian poet Shivani Ramlochan, uh, or the work of like Shani Mutu, um, Thomas Glaive, uh, the writers who have blazed a path ahead of me, who have been careful and daring in what they choose to say, and radical in what they choose to not say. And their legacy is extremely important to me. Uh, if I had to imagine this story as a scent, strangely enough, it would be the, the smell that you get when you have cut a piece of aloe and you're waiting for it to dry. Uh, I think that is a horribly astringent scent to me. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. Um, and I think the process of writing this story uh, was similarly not enjoyable. Uh, but I hope that doesn't persuade people not to read it. The title of my short story is Wrinkle Release, and it follows a young narrator who moves to New York City in the year 2058 and befriends a local laundromat owner. But things take a turn when the narrator discovers that the laundromat owner is actually a former reggae superstar who plans to use one of his washing machines to turn back time for one final concert. Um, in the most literal sense, the story was inspired by an actual laundromat out here in New York that I used to go to and, and characters um, when I first moved here. Uh, but in a larger sense, I think, in all of my stories, I try and draw on um, a lot of my West Indian heritage and, and values and in this story one of the things I draw on is just the emphasis on taking care of family and taking care of elders and community and how ingrained that is for a lot of young people from Trinidad and young West Indians in general um, but what it means when those values come in contact with Americanism or individualism or a hyper development of technology that often pushes us towards more isolated lives. I'm so honored to get to be on the shortlist for this competition um, alongside amazing talented writers and I can't wait to read the other works. Um, so thank you very much. Our stories connect us. My story, Tebrude, is I would say a story of reckoning. It's about the reckoning that every woman must do at some point in her life with the um, expectations and received norms of womanhood and motherhood, which support the fabric of our post-colonial societies. I was raised in a very mixed environment and in a country where the language spoken every day is a blend, a melange of French, Spanish, uh, English, Bodgebury, even Amerindian. So, of course, my work can't help but be voicey. And I take every opportunity to showcase the various types of Creole that we speak here in Trinidad and Tobago and to explore the stories of how we all got here. Our stories connect us. My story, The Marriage Proposal, raises the issue of emigration and the story focuses on the character Adeline 
who in her later years find herself raising two girls left in her care as their parents went off to England to find work. In my youth, I read the works of such writers as George Lamming, Samuel Selvan, Claude McKay, who themselves, having lived abroad, wrote about life in their respective Caribbean island homes. More recently, I have been inspired by Edwidge Danticat's novels and short stories, which examine the pain of having to leave one's homeland and the struggle to exist as an outsider in the new land. Indeed, the quest for happiness and economic survival are themes that resonate with all of us. I am grateful to the Commonwealth Foundation for this opportunity to engage with people across the globe. Our stories connect us.